I've got a secret and I'm going to share it with you. You don't need to buy an art journal in order to art journal. At least you don't need to spend a lot of money on expensive de designer created art journals. You've seen those. Diane Reevely, Dina Wakely, Tim Holtz. They all have their version of a journal that they're recommending and they're putting out there to sell. And I'm sure they are high quality and they are wonderful to work with. I say I'm sure, but I've never actually purchased one because I would rather take the money and buy stamps or stencils or something that I can use again and again rather than on the substrate rather than on the paper that I'm going to create on. When I started art journaling, I bought and I still buy the Canson Mixed Media art journals. I shop good deals, don't pay, pay the full price ever. But even with this, spending $20 for an art journal, when I went to create, I was afraid of wasting it. I was afraid of wrecking it. And that inhibited my creativity and stifled me. It froze me. And it wasn't until I took an old address book and repurposed it that my creativity was allowed to flow and I broke through some of those things that were holding me back. So, making your own art journals will also encourage your creativity because it's not precious. You didn't spend a lot of money on it. And in this video, I'm going to show you 10 ways that you can make your own art journals using things that you might have in your recycling bin things that you can purchase at a thrift store or the dollar store. Or things that, well, you already have in your stash and you're looking for ways to use them. As we go through them, I'm just going to give you the thumbnail sketch of each type of journal. If I've done a video making those kind of journals, I'll link it down below in the description box. And if you're interested, that's where you can go and get more information, the step-by-step -step tutorials, the how-to. Turn those gel prints that you have in your stash, even the ones you don't particularly like, into art journals. All you need to do is a little bit of cutting and a little bit of glue. I'm going to link the videos that I'm going to teach you how to make these art journals below. So if you're interested, that's where you're going to find the information. In this video, I'm just going to tell you the 10 ways that you can make your own art journal. So let's get back to these gel printed journals. You can make them a variety of sizes. That's a win. You can add more or less pages. That's up to you. It uses up your gel prints, which is a major win. Everyone's always asking, what do you do with your gel prints, Karen? They make great mini journals. And best of all, because you've put in some gel prints, you've broken that page. You have a jumping off point when you start art journaling. Breaks through that fear of the blank page. So got gel prints? You've got journals. Are you a happy planner? What do you do with your happy planners when you're done? Well, the planning. Store them on the shelf? Recycle them? Turn them into journals. They make great art journals. This one's five by seven. This one, approximately seven by 10. The papers in these happy planners are a good weight. 
they stand up to a lot of the mixed media stuff that you put on. Modeling paste, gesso, layers of paint, collage. And because they're on the coil system, you can take out the page to work on it flat on your surface and then put it back in when you're done. I love that. To further prep the pages, I just recommend brayering on or painting on a coat of gesso. That'll knock back all the writing and the journaling that you did in your planner and prepare the page for everything you're going to throw at it when you create your art journal page. Here's something that you probably have on a shelf in your house and if not you can find easily at a thrift store a recipe binder so this is a three ring binder and it had recipe cards now the recipe cards again are mostly manila tag or that weight which is perfect for mixed media again a coat of gesso and away you go i can take them out of here work flat and then put them back in the binder then you can create your mixed media piece on the cover as well. Old recipe binders make great journals. These are mini journals or mini zines. They have about eight, eight sections. They all started with one sheet of paper. I like using 11 by 17 paper but you can use other sizes as well. It's a bit of a folding process and cutting process and gluing process to get it into the mini zine format, but these make great journals. And again, the video is going to be linked below. If you've got tags, whatever size tag, you can make a little journal. Now this one is very simple, I've just taped together four tags for eight panels and then done some journaling on it. But there are other versions online. Just Google or search for tag journals on YouTube. Composition books. This size or the minis make great art journals. What you need to look for is open it up to the center and look for stitching. Those are going to last a little bit better. You can get these at Dollar Tree, Dollarama, Walmart, rather inexpensively. You can even get some that are half size on Amazon. Now, the process for turning these into these, again, I have in a video. You're gluing pages together, taking out some pages, but they make great journals. And because you haven't spent a fortune on the book, I find that I'm really free to experiment and play and try new things because I'm not worried about it being so precious and so valuable and I'm not worried about making a mistake. This one I turned into my accidental art journal. Here's where I put all the leftovers. Leftover modeling paste, leftover paint, and then over time I finish the pages. And as you can see, even with removing pages, it bulks up quite a bit. These are envelopes. Plain, ordinary envelopes. Some that are left over from Christmas cards, some that I've just purchased, a package of envelopes. They can be turned into journals like this. You can see that they are done. Again, there is a step-by-step -step video showing how to make this and turn, you know, four or five envelopes into a mini journal. Here's another one. I love these for themed journals. And I love making these and sending them away as an alternate to a greeting card. I love usable art. Take a trip to a thrift store. 
and look for books that are hardcover, that have good weight paper, kind of manila tag. This is an old journal. Now again, there's a process. You need to remove some of the pages. You need to add a, a coat of gesso, but they make beautiful art journals. Love this little mini one. And this one. A coat of gesso and away you go. Added, it's not precious. This book cost me three dollars. Here's another mini art journal. This one has six panels. And this was created from something that came as junk mail. These little pamphlet flyers. This one has eight panels, front and back. This one is identical to what I used to create this. This video is available if you are interested. You, could all, you also get little mini ones in that mail. So before you throw the junk mail out, ask yourself, would it make a good journal? This journal was made from a play bill that, from a play that I attended. It looked a lot like this that came in the junk mail. Multiple pages, fairly good weight paper, a coat or two of gesso, and you have an art journal. I like the mini art journals because, you know, there might be eight pages, ten pages. You get them done and you have that sense of accomplishment. And because you're using stuff out of the recycle bin, you're not worried about wasting it. And that frees up your creativity. This, my Faces art journal, started out as a handout that you can get at a hardware store. A little bit of gesso, little collage paper over the top, and you're set to art journal. Now if you've watched my channel, you know that I like using the Canson Mixed Media art journals. So yes, I do buy pre-bought art journals. I get these at Michael's, I wait till they have buy one, get one free, and then I stock up. And I like these because it has a good weight of paper. I can take off the coils, and that allows me to work flat on the paper, which just makes it easier. Then, when I have 30 or 40 of the pages done, I just put the coil back on, and I do the cover. Now, you'll notice that they bulk up quite a bit. And when you buy them, often if you look, sometimes they have 60 pages. Well, if I art journaled on all 60 pages, it would be so bulky, I, it would close. So I am typically rebind it at about 40 pages. That's kind of what you have here. Now the leftover pages, I don't throw out. I use them when I make some of my DIY journals. Now these DIY journals have signatures in them. And there is some of that mixed media paper that I folded to size to make up the signatures. So I can cut it six by six, five by seven, whatever size, but I'm using the papers from here to put in here. Now the covers of these are made from boxes, cereal boxes, cracker boxes, and again, there's a video that shows this. This allows me to use the paper that I'm not using from my mixed media journal 
and it allows me to make whatever size I want. I loved working on those six by six cards. So I wanted some six by six pages. So I made an art journal that fits that size. More ways to save your art journaling money? Watch this video or this one.